Greetings, beloved Apostle Townsend, your regional apostle for the East Alabama, West Georgia region. So glad to be here with you again. And even though I am a regional apostle, many areas in my teaching and my messages that I receive from Jesus are for his universal church. And so I believe that what I'm going to share with you today is a universal message, not something that is just limited to the region that God has placed me in uh, to minister. So before we get into the word of God, let's just have a quick word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, before we ask you for anything, we just want to say thank you. And Lord God, we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. And also, Lord God, we pray now for the revelation of the Father, illumination by your Holy Spirit, impartation through your preacher, application and transformation in the hearers for the manifestation of your Son. And Holy Ghost, we give unto you your office place and your office space that you may perform your office work. We thank you, we bless you, and we praise you for this revelation of a difference. That is, God, the revelation that will make the difference in our lives as we begin to take the necessary turns. In Jesus' name, amen. So God has been dealing with me for several months now uh, on a particular subject, and that subject uh, is entitled Pathfinders, or if you will, beloved, Becoming Kingdom Pathfinders for Jesus. Becoming Kingdom Pathfinders for Jesus. And I want to begin reading into your hearing uh, in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, uh, and I'm going to read quite extensively in this opening session. Uh, then we'll come back and we'll have another session a little later on, uh, a part two, if you will, of becoming kingdom pathfinders for Jesus. But in this first session, I want to talk to you from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 20. That, that again is Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through uh, 20, and we'll be coming from the New King James Version, the New King James Version of our Lord's Bible, although as we always say, it is customary that we say, although we're coming from the King James, excuse me, the New King James Version, whatever version you may have, ultimately it will come out the same because the Holy Spirit is our teacher and our guide, the one who brings all things to our remembrance that Jesus has said, done, and taught. So Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 20 reads, Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Brother Gender Free. Verse 6, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, or your Heavenly Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask Him? Verse 12, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, the golden rule, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Verses 13 and 14, listen closely to these two verses. And we'll come back and touch them again as we close out the initial reading. Enter by the narrow gate. 
For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Not who go in that way, but who even finds it. Verse 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by the fruits or by their fruits, you will know them. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the readers of his holy word. I want to go back and read again into your hearing from Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, which is the key text in this, uh, in this context. Amen. And that's why I read so much, because I, I wanted you to have the text in its context so that it would not become a pretext, if you will. And so in verse 13 of Matthew chapter 7, it says again, and, and 14, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Verse 14, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Again, our topic is becoming uh, kingdom pathfinders for Jesus. And I want to leave this thought with you. Jesus still calls kingdom pathfinders to be first in and last out. And so are you ready to start the process or get on the path to becoming a kingdom pathfinder for Jesus to be first in? Glory to God. To be what? First in. First on the scene and last out. Last off the scene. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so becoming or uh, before going into this lesson any further, before going into any greater detail or taking a deep dive into the lessons that our Lord was intimating to his disciples in these texts, let's first discover the initial meaning of certain key words. I have, I have pulled out six key words that I believe are paramount to truly getting our getting a deeper revelation of Jesus' teachings. And the first word I want to pull out is the word narrow. Narrow. N-A-R-R-O-W. Narrow in the English. The second word I would like to pull out would be the word way. Way. W-A-Y. The third word I would like to pull out of that text in Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 is the word leads. Leads or lead. The fourth word is destruction. The fifth word is difficult. And the sixth and final word would be find or to find. Now, let me just kind of give you a little, uh, a little background on these words from the original language. Uh, from the original language, the Greek language that our word narrow and the word straight S-T-R-A-I-T are translated from in the New King James Bible and other versions. They're translated from the Greek word according to Strong's number G4728 and that Greek word is stenos, S-T-E-N-O-S, S-T-E-N-O-S, which basically uh, means obstacles standing close Obstacles standing close about you, you're in a walled-in area with little to no room, a little to no play. You can't really go left or right. You're kind of in a straight situation. The second word, the word way, is derived from the original Greek word according to Strong's uh, uh, number G, 3598, 3598. And that original Greek word is hodos, H-O-D-O-S, which means a road or 
or the road to the progress or the route, route, excuse me, or the act or distance that it would take, the mode of travel that you would need to go. And it would be a highway as opposed to a lower or unproven and possibly even dangerous or unsafe way. So when Jesus says in John 14 and 6, I am the what? Way. He's saying, I am the hodas. I am the highway. I am the improved journey or mode of travel for all of my disciples. If you do what I do, you'll end up where I am. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he wants us to go the way that he has as our initial pathfinder. He has led and he is showing us the way. He says, I am the way. Then he says, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. Glory to God. I am the way. I am the holdos. I'm the highway. And my way is the true way. And this is the way that leads to life. Glory to God. And so we want to go the way that Jesus goes. Hallelujah. Then the third word lead or leads is from uh, Strong's G number 520. And it's A-P-A-G-O. A-P-A-G-O. Apago. Apago. It means to take off in a various sense. It means to carry away or to lead away or to put my previous life to death. And I begin to go the way that Jesus desires for me to go. The fourth word is destruction. Again, the word destruction from, again, Strong's Concordance number uh, G684, Apalia. And that means the second death or destruction or perdition. It means to be excluded or to have exclusion from the Messiah's kingdom. To be excluded, not included, but excluded from Jesus' kingdom. The fifth word, difficult, is Strong's Concordance number G2346, and that is T H L I B O. T H L I B O. Thlebo. Thlebo. It means to crowd to afflict, to crush, to make the thing difficult, the way difficult, to be, if you will, hard pressed and to suffer tribulation and trouble. Tribulation and trouble. That's difficult in our English vernacular. Then the last word, find, F-I-N-D. Strong's Concordance number uh, G2147. This is the last one, beloved. G2147. Hurisco, H-E-U-R-I-S-K-O, Hurisco. It means to find, I love this, it means to find by search, by inquiry, to find out to discover a thing. Now, there are things in life, beloved, that we would see, and seeing may be incidental. But when we look for something, we find something because looking is intentional while seeing may be just incidental. Because I have, I have eyes, things are happening around me, so this is one of my five senses because my eyes are open, I see certain things. But I may see things that I was not looking for, I was not prepared to see, but when we find things, we have to be looking for something in particular. So even though seeing is incidental in most cases, finding by looking is intentional. Glory to God. Finding by looking is intentional. And so to, be, to become kingdom pathfinders for Jesus, we have to be looking to Jesus. We have to be looking to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. We cannot look to other people. We cannot look to other uh, 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 ways. We can only look to Jesus and his way because again, he said to us in John 14 and 6 that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. One of the major sayings uh, 
that, that people have today is speak your truth or I'm going to speak my truth. Uh, beloved, there's no such thing. There's only one truth. That's God's truth. And so when Jesus says in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he's saying this is the only truth that is true. <laughs> Everything else may be something that's trending. It may be tradition or whatever the case may be. But everything I'm saying to you, Jesus is saying, is true. We do not speak our own truth, beloved. That is just something that's trending right now. No, when we speak Jesus, when we say what he said, then we're speaking truth. Now, again, becoming kingdom pathfinders for Jesus. Becoming kingdom pathfinders for Jesus. We follow him and then we become leaders for others. So Jesus says, not only did he pray for his disciples in John chapter 17, but he also prayed for those who would hear his words through those disciples. Glory to God. So Jesus has already went to the Father on your behalf that you would come his way. Glory to God. So a lot of times in ministry, uh, especially, we say, uh, in Christianity, I don't want to miss God. I don't want to miss God. Well, uh, Matthew 5 and 8, Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount message, blessed are the what? Pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You won't miss God if your heart is pure. Glory to God. God won't let you, beloved. He won't let you miss him. Hallelujah. He'll organize things or orchestrate things in such a manner that, that because of the purity of your heart, he wants you where he is. Hallelujah. So you don't have to worry about missing God as long as your heart is pure. Now, I spent 20 years in the United States Army, and I'm going to read something into your hearing. Uh, but I spent uh, 20 years in the United States Army, and I was in the uh, artillery branch uh, in the Army uh, for 20 years. Well, a split and a half, I also spent some time in the recruiting command, about eight years of that 20. Uh, but there's also a group of individuals in the U.S. Army called Pathfinders. Pathfinders. We're actually located here in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, in the Phoenix City, uh, Alabama region. But there is a major army installation uh, called Fort Benning that's here in Columbus, Georgia. And on Fort Benning, they have the Airborne School. They have many of the schools uh, that a lot of soldiers come from and sailors and Marines and everybody from around the world, even other nations come to these schools. Uh, to learn how to jump out of perfectly good airplanes, you know, all these different things they learn. Well, we actually have uh, or have had what's called the Pathfinder School. Glory to God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The Pathfinder School, which is a, was a three-week school, uh, basically about 21 days of rigorous, intense training uh, that they even have maybe a Q course, a pre-qualification course at your normal installation that you could go through just to get ready, come on somebody, just to get ready for the Army School here at Fort Benning. This was not a school for everyone. This is a school for certain ones. And in many cases, in many cases, just because I want to do things in the Army does not mean I have what it takes to actually be a part of that. And this school is open to anyone and everyone, hallelujah, but everyone's not going to make it. The attrition rate is extremely high, almost like Special Forces, uh, at the Green Beret and the Rangers, some of the other elite groups uh, in the United States Army. So Pathfinders are elite light fighters. Glory to God. They are elite light fighters. And I'm going to read something to you that I pulled from Wikipedia that gives extensive information about the Army's Pathfinders. And as I begin to read this into your hearing, beloved, I pray that you would think of it in terms of the kingdom of God. 
in terms of the kingdom of God and individuals that God desires to use in order to show others the way that they've taken, which is his way, which is his way. I am the what? Way. I am the what? Hodas. I am the what? Highway. I'm not the byway. I'm not the service road. Jesus says, I am the high road. Glory to God. I am the, thank you, Holy Ghost. I am the highway. I am the safest road traveled. You know, in times of antiquity, beloved, uh, before there were improved paved roads and things of this nature, there were paths that were made through the wilderness in order to get to the more populated regions. And some of the settlers, uh, when they had to go into uh, the more populated and the more um, uh, metropolitan areas, if I could use that term, uh, where a lot of other people were congregated and where there were stores, general stores and things of this nature, they would have to leave their uh, settlement area and take a path, glory to God, and take a path. Now, generally they would never take these trips alone. No, no. So even though these were, these were roads or pathways through the, through the bush uh, that are well-traveled because there's a path, there's a beaten path there, amen, still you got woods, you have forests, you have wilderness on both sides, glory to God, and even ahead of you and even behind you. And so there were wild beasts uh, in the thickets. Uh, there were people who would ambush you, there were robbers, there were thieves, and so it was not a safe road to travel alone, beloved, alone. And so they always went two by two. Oh, glory to God. At least two by two. One could, one could lead while the other would watch. Glory to God. And then they would switch and then one would lead and the other could watch. So we would always, somebody would always be fresh, uh, uh, vigilant and attentive because watching, hallelujah, watching while you're walking is more important than the walking because you need to make sure you're traveling the safest route possible and you don't want to be overcome by the enemy. You don't want to be overcome by wild beasts and ripped apart. And so it was probably nothing for them to walk the trail and see people who had traveled alone with their flesh ripped apart. I don't mean to sound graphic, beloved, but I'm just saying, in times of antiquity, this is the best possible example I could give you. And so even in Christianity, even in ministry, there are, if you will, bodies of people from the body of Christ who are hurt, disillusioned, frustrated, and hard to get along with, and in many cases they call it church hurt, because Maybe we have a spiritual leader who is not very spiritual and who's not really a leader. And so people suffer what we call church hurt. Well, it's the same thing. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I want to read extensively before we take a break, and then I'll come back and talk to you about, you know, the second half of this. But I want to read uh, about the U.S. Army Pathfinders. And again, as you hear me uh, uh, go into this reading from Wikipedia, please keep in mind becoming a kingdom pathfinder for Jesus. That is our goal. Let me read, let me read um, Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 again before I go into that. He says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Then he says in verse 14, Matthew chapter 7, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, which leads to what? Life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the what? Life. And there are few who find it. Find what? Real, true life in Christ. Hallelujah. We don't even know the path in many cases. Glory to God. And so he says here, when he says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many who go in by it. Then he says in verse 14, because, what? Yeah, he says, because narrow. In other words, what God is, what Jesus is saying here is, because this way is, 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 is the way that most people go with conventional thinking, it's a wide open broad way. He says, but the way that needs to be traveled 
appears to be narrow, tight, and restrictive. Narrow, tight, and restrictive because not many people want to travel a road that promises struggle and difficulty. That promises struggle and difficulty. And remember the word narrow or straight, not like a straight line, but S-T-R-A-I-T, straight, is the Greek word hodos, I'm sorry, is the Greek word stanos, excuse me, beloved, which means obstacles standing close about it's a walled in area with little to no room or play, if you will, not to play, but or play. And so what God is trying to say to us, the way that I want you to go in order to come where I and be where I am and be with me is going to be a way that you would not naturally in and of yourself choose. You would choose the most prevalent and the broad and the wide open way that many are already traveling. But Jesus is trying to get us to see that there's a way that's tighter, but it's righter. I don't know if I can use that word. There's a, there's a way that's tight, but it's right. And this one may be wide open and it may seem strong, but it may be wrong. The problem with following the crowd, beloved, is stepping in what it leaves behind. Let me say it again. The problem with following the crowd is possibly stepping in what it leaves behind. That's what happened when you were in a herd. Anyway, the U.S. Army Pathfinders. The modern U.S. Army Pathfinders are an elite force making up less than, watch this, 0.01% of the total army. Their primary mission is is to infiltrate areas and set up parachute drop zones and helicopter landing zones for airborne and air assault missions. The Pathfinders, a little history, the Pathfinders were created in World War II when American paratrooper units needed a way to mark areas and guide aircraft to a specific spot. God wants to come into a specific spot. Early airborne operations resulted in scattered drops up to seven miles from the target. Darkness and inclement weather made it extremely difficult for aircraft to find the drop zone. The 509th Parachute Infantry Battalion and the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 82nd Airborne Division, were working on an idea they had learned from the British or the Brits. And it was an elite force would go in prior to the main assault, glory to God, with visual and electronic signaling devices to guide aircraft to the drop zone and gliders to their landing zones. Their first use in combat was September the 13th, 1943, doing combat jumps into Italy. World War II era, Pathfinders are most remembered for their jump into Normandy during the invasion of 1944 on June 6th, when they led the way, when they did what? When they led the way for Allied forces into Europe. They were employed throughout southern France, the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, in the course of Allied airborne operations until the end of the war in Europe. They were also used in the Pacific Theater with the 11th Airborne Division during the liberation of the Philippines. The Korean War saw a limited use of the Pathfinders by the 187th Airborne Regiment. After the Vietnam War, Pathfinders were with the major airborne units and various combat aviation battalions or groups. They also saw a growth in the Army National Guard and the Army Reserves. Pathfinder platoons during the 1970s and the 1980s. Many conducted joint task force missions in Latin America, Europe, and the Middle East. Mm. From a high of, I'm gonna skip some of this, from a high of five Pathfinder companies in the past decade, a reduction began with the 15th of May, 2015 inactivation 
of the 159th uh, Combat Aviation Brigade in the 101st Airborne Division, which included the brigade's Pathfinder Company concurrently, the 101st Cab was rede redesignated as the Cab 101st Airborne Division, bringing it in line with other non-numbered divisional cabs. At this point, the division assumed the same organizational structure as the 10th Mountain Division, which is up in Fort Drum, New York area. It's a light infantry unit. In the summer of 2016, we're coming closer to our dates now. In the summer of 2016, the Provisional Pathfinder Company in the 25th Inf Infantry Division was inactivated, followed by the inactivation uh, on August 2nd, uh, 2016 of the remaining Pathfinder companies in the 101st Airborne Division in a ceremony at Fort Campbell, uh, Kentucky. And, uh, and the Provisional Company in the 10th Mountain Division by October uh, 2016. The last Pathfinder unit, watch this now, the last Pathfinder unit in the Army, a company authorized uh, by MTO in the 82nd Airborne Division was inactivated in a ceremony on February uh, the 24th, 2017. February 24th, 27, that's the most recent, beloved, at Simmons Army Airfield at Fort Bragg. North Carolina. Training at the Pathfinder School continues. What did you just say? Training at the Pathfinder School continues, but there are no more Pathfinder units. There are what? No more Pathfinder units. Now watch this, beloved, and then we'll kind of bring this thing in. We'll land this thing. Although the U.S. Army has deactivated all of its Pathfinder units, it has not deactivated, hallelujah, the Pathfinder's mission, but has rather spread qualified torch badge wearing soldiers. That's what the badge has. It has a, it has a torch, a, 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 a torch with fire coming out of it. That's the Pathfinder's badge that you receive after you complete the course. Uh, it has not deactivated the Pathfinder's mission, but has rather spread qualified torch badge wearing soldiers among the ranks where needed. Glory to God. There will always be a need for those who are, as the Pathfinder's motto says, first in, last out. First in, hallelujah, last out. Jesus also has the need for Pathfinders. The kingdom of God is also in search of individuals who are willing to go the narrow, straight, if you will, tight way, but right way. Glory to God. Jesus said these words to those he sent in first. In Luke chapter 10, verse 1 through 12. But I think I'll just read verse number 1. After these things... The Lord appointed 70 others also after he had appointed his original 12 and sent them how? Two by two. Remember, traveling that dangerous pathway in times of antiquity, you should never go alone. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them out how? Two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Oh, glory to God. So there are some places in the earth, there are some places in the United States of America where Jesus desires to come and minister, deliver, save, set free, uh, uh, illuminate his word. He wants to do many things in your area, beloved. But he says he needs, he needs pathfinders. He needs individuals to go, disciples to go before he comes and make his way straight. And that is what John the Baptist said. And I'll read that as we close. In Matthew chapter 3, in Matthew chapter 3, it says in verse 1, in those days John the Baptist came preaching where? In the wilderness. Remember we talked about the wilderness in times of antiquity, the places where other people did not want to go. Amen. In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying what? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, 
the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Watch this now. Prepare the what? Way. Prepare the hodas of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Glory to God. So God sends many of us to places where others may not want to go because we have the stuff that sticks and stays. And God wants to because we, we're proven and we are proven elite light fighters two by two. And he can send us into regions that others may not want to go into. But these are the places where he wants to go. He wants to go, glory to God, where others do not want to go. Remember he said, remember he said in John chapter four, I must needs be go through Samaria. I'm sure his, uh, his disciples were like, wait a minute, we don't have anything to do with the Samaritans. Why are you going through Samaria? Samaritans need to be saved too. Samaritans need to be saved too. The people you don't like, God still wants to save them. The places that you don't want to live, there are people there that God is wanting to save. Will you become, glory to God, a kingdom pathfinder for Jesus? I want to come back and talk to you a little bit about some of the straight ways that God takes us, some of the things he does with us, to us, so that he can do things through us in our second and closing segment. God bless you. 